Buenos días, bienvenidos. Good morning, welcome. Thank you for being here. My name is Federico Salomón, and I form part of the technical team of GenNexus, and I also uh, form uh, make projects. We're going to be talking about uh, the possibilities of GenNexus 15 in uh, um, responsive apps, and how can we empower apps. To start with, I would like to show you the situation or the reason why I uh, started making this type of apps. And the application is called Boliches UI. Boliches meaning this goes in English. This is an app uh, focused on uh, all the supply of bars and discos uh, in uh, Uruguay in the evenings. It works for iOS, uh, Android, and Windows Phone. And there you can see uh, um, their proposals. Uh, you can make uh, reservations and everything that the app offers. When uh, I discussed this with Boliches UI people, they said we wanted to improve this app. And uh, they've already got the native application. This application is successful. And they wanted to expand their market. So we thought it was a good occasion to take this app to the web, to web mobile. We've already got the knowledge on the knowledge base. And uh, uh, we simply had to generate this app for the web. Of course, we used the Nexus 15, which is our best version, and it was going to be responsive. So we started developing Bolitas. We were still developing. There is no official version. We started with a beta version. I would like to um, thank uh, Martin. Um, the result is going to be wonderful. Just uh, you can be at ease. Another. Um, knowledge base generated with uh, GenNexus 15. It's a KB that has accompanied GenNexus community for quite a long time. This is a sample KB that has um, that is available in our samples server. We've been converting it um, to the latest version of GenNexus to count on its benefits. Let me tell you very briefly what this application is about. There is a tool that Google Chrome offers that allows me to change the view, and uh, I can see it in different sizes. We have a large screen here. You're going to see a uh, CCS style of the app that someone recommended to us. This is a list of uh, conferences. This is an app to make events. It could be this type of event, or it could be your granny's birthday party. So we're going to focus all the information related here. We've got all the lectures. We'll be able to uh, navigate it. We have the highlights of the lectures here on the right. Uh, we have a panel here. We can see Nicolas there. Well, the idea is they can see this well. It's a bit uh, cut off. We can go to the right or left, and uh, we can see that when we execute this application in a smaller size uh, screen, this uh, app uh, adjusts itself to the size, and we see different rows, and uh, it's scrolling down in this case. We can also see that the menu, which was horizontal, is no longer horizontal, but it's uh, vertical. And uh, you can show all the sites there. And uh, the contents of the app are adjusted. The component uh, using uh, showing the first part disappears because, as Nicolas said, we haven't got enough room in the screen uh, to show everything. So we have to choose what we want to show. You can uh, access that component using the star from favorite. We could go on uh, deeper into the app, but I don't want to go uh, too much in detail. So I'd like to tell you what we need to have a, um, an app that is responsive. Well, 
ourselves. In the first place, we need an editor. The editor allows us to reflect this concept of design managed by responsive apps to adjust contents automatically on the basis of the screen size, and they work with percentages. The second uh, issue is the theme. This is going to give us enough power to design CCS that our designer is asking for. This is vital. It's vital to work with uh, designers and agree with them because results are quite different. You can see when a designer has worked on an application. Then controls and resources. Uh, Genexus will provide you with this, uh, encapsulating uh, responsive apps, and uh, it's going to be very good. And then useful tools. These tools will allow us to reduce development time, to improve productivity and, uh, of the developer, and to have better feedback to know what we are doing in the interfaces. So let's go into the editor. What does the editor of Genexus 15 offer? Well, in the first place, we decided to change the default of certain properties in our knowledge base, at, uh, in our version, so that whenever we um, start from scratch with a KB, um, we can have all the benefits of responsive apps. We won't have to do anything else. We'll see how our apps behave in a responsive manner. As you can see, the default uh, um, is changed. We also uh, changed the uh, abstract default that allows us to generate this type of uh, interface and a couple of other properties that allow us to make a fully responsive app. In the second place, we have the responsive sizes dialog. This is a very important dialog because it will allow us to model the interfaces of our apps to different sizes. And in this chart, in this screen, I'm sorry, you're going to see uh, this is this is the font that uh, we have seen in the event day, and you're going to see that it's set for large. Now let's see how our controls. I mean, this is the image of the uh, presenter. It's on the left. Now, if I execute in a smaller device, this uh, table with the image comes to the second row uh, using uh, all the screen. So this is the heart, in fact, of the design of our screens. With this dialog, we'll be able to make all the design of the interface that we require. In the second place, in the third place, rather, um, this is the uh, part that has really facilitated everything. This possibility of changing the classes uh, on the object. It was quite frequent that we had to modify classes, the classes of our controls, go into the theme, find in the class, and there modify its uh, properties. However, now we can do it directly from the object, and this is very good. Uh, because it reduces your time and it allows you to focus on the object you are working on without having to move constantly whenever you want to change properties in uh, as regards theme or style. I have here picker image attributes. There is an associated class. But the important thing here is that if I change it, I can edit the properties of this class directly. The second important thing has to do with themes. This will give us the, uh, enough CCS so that our app respects the style of the designer and there is um, an enriched interface. Now, the first change that we've seen in this theme, and I'm going to give you three situations, which I think was quite frequent or are quite frequent in the in app, app development. We've all had to change the style of links in general. They are underlined and they are um, blue. And if you put your mouse on top, there is a certain behavior. The cursor changes into a hand, and this gives you an idea to the user that there is something behind it. We had to do it with classes. 
uh, we didn't have native classes allowing us to make those changes and so we had to uh, create um, different um, functionalities and after several steps we were able to generate the necessary interface. Now in Genexus 15 this theme allows us the possibility of adding up classes. I'm going to have a class, the class of my link, and this is going to be the, the it's going to have the default style. And then what I did, uh, what I did was to create a new class. I want to have a new style when I hover over the link and then I'm going to associate the properties to my class in its natural status. Uh, uh, we could do it with all the other classes. But I simply wanted to say that I needed two steps to create the class with my style and associate it to the original class. In the second uh, place, a very usual and frequent uh, situation um, had to do with pop-ups. Uh, to personalize the pop-ups, we had to go back and uh, look at the HTML and had a little bit more advanced uh, knowledge to be able to apply the style. We can simply do it with the native themes classes. As I showed you with links, the pop-up will give you the possibility of uh, configuring it and uh, it will have associated classes and uh, it will give you this possibility of having associated images. This is, of course, a very large uh, uh, advantage. We don't have to play with the behavior of KB, which is difficult to maintain. This is far easier. Third scenario, when we use user control, because it has Genexus uh, functionalities, it was complicated to personalize, to personalize your user control was difficult. In general, there is a style to them, and it was difficult to adjust. Uh, so you had to go into the CCS of user control. With Genexus 15, we can modify the appearance of user controls right from the Genexus object. We're going to tell user control what class is going to use, and we'll be able to do it far easily. As regards the third point, controls and resources. Controls and resources will provide us functionalities of responsive apps that are encapsulated. We see certain uh, controls in action. Uh, for instance, this is the web navi navigation bar. This is the menu that we've seen in the event day, and it can be adapted to the screen. In a larger screen, we're going to see that this moves horizontally, while in an app executed in an extra small um, screen, it will be displayed downwards, one on top of the other. Of course, this control has the automatic control to be adapted to the different types of sizes, and by defining a couple of properties, we'll be able to do so. So what we've done here in the objects with an interface with Genexus, we added another bar called action groups. Certain controls will be associated to it, images, attributes, variables, buttons, and so on. And then once we have the, defined those buttons in the action group, we are going to say the render is going to be a menu. Uh, this shows the value, the, 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 the result that uh, I've got. Another control we've seen in stressing the digital transformation, what and how, well, what is it? I want a, a grid that shows in this way and that can be adapted automatically depending on the different sizes of a screen. And here we can see that the grid is made on a large um, screen. There's uh, Nicolas' photograph, his name, company, and his bio data. Now, the same thing in, on an extra small um, screen, you will have Nicolas' image at the top and then the rest of the information below. How can I do this? Well, I define properties. This is a standard grid that we've got in our application. It's the lectures, um, lecturer's menu, and I want that it shows horizontally. 
When I do, the properties that are displayed by this value, uh, there is a property that will allow me to define how many items will be shown on this grid depending on the screen uh, size. In the case of the event day, uh, we will have an item depending on the screen size. So I could say that when this application is executed on a large screen, I would like to have more items. Instead of one, I could say three. Now, insist that I've done this just by defining properties. I didn't have to click on anything else because GeneXus 15 is intelligent enough that once I define this control, it will adapt it to the different screen sizes. I could go on with controls with all the power in relation to resources of GeneXus uh, 15. Nicolas has already told you about the capacity of showing different components depending on the uh, screen size. Now, the event day, well, we've seen it when I um, clicked on the, the star of favorites and it would display the most important lecturers, for instance, on the right. Now, control for web, it's a pack control that we can use in an event day, in, in a day event, and uh, we can show the various days on the event, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday in this case. This is a very useful control, and we are distributing it in our um, native um, we can make a massive upload of uh, files, different screens. We can also talk about the infinite scrolling property in grids. We can go on talking endlessly on the various controls, but I don't want to dwell on that. Now, lastly, useful tools. These are the tools that will allow us to enhance our productivity and get better results when we design interfaces. Live editing. Uh, I think we uh, heard this last in our last event. This is being released with GeneXus 15. I would like to recommend uh, Martin Torrado's lecture. He's going to be talking about this new technology that has um, made our lives easier. This is the GeneXus capacity to give us a view of the changes we are making on our objects and the need to compile them, and not even to save them. So this is certainly a very large advantage that we have in this version and that we can use it. We really have to include them included in our development. Then the form preview. This is a dialogue that will allow us to visualize how our screens and controls are going to be displayed according to the various screen sizes. This is a dialogue that is also adapted to the screen uh, sizes. Um, if I go over with them, or if I go over them with my mouth, I'll see how the screen adapts. In an extra small uh, screen, my speakers panel will be like this: uh, image, uh, company, description. In a large screen, I will hover over my mouth, and uh, you will see a different. Uh, display. This is very useful. It does, although it doesn't give us a feedback of uh, this, it gives us a very accurate feedback on the positioning of it on different screens, and they are supplementary. I can use both tools. I leave form preview to see the controls on the screen, and I li use live editing to see the question of style and make that kind of uh, changes live without having to save my objects. I would like to show you some related conferences, Martin's conference, he would be talking about live editing, he will be making a demo live, I highly recommend it. Maxi Barnes' lecture is on how to coexist with designers, how to get the results that designers give us in their designs. And so this is most important when you uh, have to uh, refer to user ex uh, interface and user experience. Experts in these matters will be discussing with us how to get good designs, how to have good and excellent uh, user experience. So that's the cafe um, with design and user experience. 
Everything is in uh, this link, genexus.com slash nexus15. I would like to thank you all for having attended my lecture and having uh, listened to this uh, update of uh, responsive apps of GenXus 15. I would like you to dream big and dream digital. Thank you. Good GenXus. Thank you.